First of all, I want to say what a fight and what domination from Terence Crawford. He just seemed like he was prepared for Errol Spence in every way. Everything Spence did, Crawford had an answer to. But the first thing I want to talk about is how Crawford dealt with arguably Spence's best weapon, his jab. Spence outworks and overwhelms all of his opponents with his constant, stiff jab. However, Crawford more or less completely neutralized this weapon with the most basic yet effective counters, which is slipping or parrying the jab to the outside and simultaneously jabbing all in one motion. As you see in these examples, Crawford will slip Errol Spence's jab to the outside while simultaneously throwing his own jab. The point I want to get across with this is that Crawford is actually jabbing with Spence. Since both Spence and Crawford are fighting in southpaw, the jab hand is lined up the center line for both guys. Notice how Crawford not only parries the jab, but also slightly slips to the outside for extra defense. The outside slip also aids with the beginning of the jab, and this is why the simultaneous parry, slip, jab is one of the staple counters against the jab in the same stance matchups. This is something Gennady Golovkin was a master at in order to take away his opponent's jabs. And now that Crawford was able to take away Spence's jab with this, Spence was unable to get any pressure going or establish his pace. And this is when the fun for Crawford was about to begin. But first a message from our sponsor Boxing Showtimes. If you're a boxing fan and never want to miss a fight, Boxing Showtimes is the only app you'll need. This app has a full boxing schedule that will show you how to buy tickets, keep you up to date with boxing news, give you reminders on upcoming fights, and so much more. My favorite feature of Boxing Showtimes is the interactive map that allows you to see what places are showing the fights near you. Use my link in the description to download for free, and once again thank you Boxing Showtimes for sponsoring this video. So now that Crawford has taken away Spence's main pressure tool in his jab, Crawford can now apply his own offensive pressure, and what I want to highlight in these next sequences is his excellent punch selection. So he pops Spence with a jab, and this gets Spence to change levels and cover up, which is good. It's good to change levels to avoid possible follow-up punches. However, Spence doesn't create space with the level change. He actually leans in with it. This is something Spence will do a lot, to smother and initiate inside fights. But you notice here the range isn't right. He really is in a bad position here because he's leaning way in right in front of Crawford instead of smothering Crawford with it. There isn't much from this position Spence can do. This is something he doesn't usually get punished for, but Crawford is prepared. Notice how Spence was covered up in a tight high guard. Instantly Crawford shoots a looping left hook, which is the excellent punch selection I was talking about. The tight guard Spence was in is open around the flanks so the hook would go right around it. However, you notice Spence lowers his guard and gets hit anyway. It's possible Crawford used the left hook because he knew Spence wasn't going to just stay in that tight high guard and was going to lower his lead arm anyway, so the left hook was perfect for both situations. Spence then tries to step around to try to smother Crawford, but Crawford anticipates it and steps around with Spence to create an angle for an uppercut. The uppercut is perfect here because the previous hook will subconsciously make Spence widen his guard to block another hook, but also with Spence leaning forward like a sitting duck, it's the perfect punch to split the guard. And there you see the uppercut. And just as the cherry on top, Crawford beautifully angles out to escape. Notice how Crawford also controls Spence with his right hand as he escapes. Crawford doesn't just stand there and engage in the inside fight Spence wants. 
He lands his shots and controls Spence so that he could escape and avoid any return fire. This is an excellent display of boxing. Here we're going to see more excellent punch selection from Crawford. We see the jab, and then you notice that Spence overcommits to parrying Crawford's jab as a result of eating too many jabs to this point. Crawford smartly recognizes this and shoots a hook right around the opening. Crawford tries to follow up with a left hook, but Spence avoids it by going back into his leaning forward crouch down position. However, Crawford uses his missed left hook and turns it into head control. This pins Spence into his forward lean, and Crawford now has a free hand still available to punch. The beauty of this is that instead of losing his turn and having to defend after he misses a punch, by turning his missed punch into control, he's able to continue his offense. And there you see the right hook around the open flank. The next thing I want to talk about is how Crawford was prepared to deal with what I like to call the push-off tactic that Spence uses on the inside. I made a video showing how Spence uses his shoulders on the inside to push his opponents off to create space. And while they are stepping back to reset and gather their balance, Spence takes the opportunity to punch them. And then here against Crawford you see Spence trying to set up the same shoulder control where he goes onto the inside. And then you see Spence is looking to push Crawford back so that he could set up a right hook while Crawford is resetting. Except Crawford knows exactly what Spence is doing and is prepared by taking a big step back to avoid being pushed off balance and so that he could also avoid the punch, which he does. And you see, this would be an ideal situation to counter Spence for the wild swing and miss, but his forward momentum smothers Crawford and is much too close for a meaningful punch to land. So what is Crawford going to do? We see Crawford create space by stepping laterally. This puts him outside of Spence's lead shoulder, where Spence can't possibly hit him. It also allows him to line up this big right hook, which hurts Spence. This is an excellent answer to Spence's shoulder tactic. And the last thing I want to talk about is how will Crawford deal with the signature relentless body attack of Errol Spence. I got many comments from people saying how will Crawford deal with Spence's body attacking. They all said he wouldn't be able to deal with it and that Spence will end up being too big and too strong for Crawford as well as too relentless with the body attack. Well just like just about everything else in Spence's game, Crawford had an answer for this too. The answer is actually quite simple. Crawford would simply step back when Spence punched his way in. This way he could see the body shot when it comes and catch it with his elbows. The step back also makes Spence reach for when he does shoot the body shot. And this is crucial because the space created gives Crawford the space to shoot his counter shot of choice, which is his signature 2-1 combination. Shoutouts to Boxing Gems for predicting that this same 2-1 combination from Crawford could possibly be an issue for Spence in the fight. I recommend checking out his channel, he's got phenomenal videos. And Crawford mainly used this combination as a counter after Spence reached down for body shots. And of course, as always, special thanks to my GOAT tier patrons, Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Albert Chen, Jeff, Dmitry Drozdov, Andre, Gossalegeza, Mark Price, Marshall Bott, Swazna Bear, Jesus Galindo, Tal Lane, John Stroll, Justin Butler, and Clay Cox. You guys keep the channel going, as well as my channel members, Hot Pocket Maestro and Lucas Miller. I'll see you guys all in the next one.